Lionel Messi produced yet another masterclass on Wednesday. Argentina continued to celebrate their World Cup triumph by netting seven goals against Curacao, and La Polga was instrumental throughout, scoring a sublime hat-trick. His exploits allowed him to pass the 100-goal milestone in international football. He now has 102 goals in an Argentina shirt. Inevitably, he was elated with his side's achievements. What a wonderful way to finish this international break. It's impressive to see so many people here at the Santiago del Estero. Let's hope we can continue to share such special moments like these and the festivities never stop. As is customary, fans were quick to comment on his performance on social media, with many pointing to the quality of Argentina's opposition. Messi playing against the Mickey Mouse clubhouse. You guys are here making noise because Messi scored a hat-trick against a nation no one has ever heard of. Are you people not ashamed of yourselves? Just imagine the name Curacao. Is that even a name of a nation? Shame on you Lionel Messi fans. We reckon this guy should be slightly more ashamed of having never heard of Curacao though. But alas, we digress. One fan then compared Messi's performance to CR7. Before you downplay Lionel Messi's masterclass, just know that Curacao is ranked 86 in FIFA ranking, way higher than Liechtenstein, Luxembourg and San Marino. Lionel Messi is nobody's mate. Luxembourg do indeed lie in 92nd in the FIFA rankings, while Liechtenstein are all the way down in 198th. But here's an interesting thought. Why don't we just sit back and enjoy them both? There was a poignant moment at the end of the encounter as Messi went to swap shirts with the Curacao goalkeeper. I'm sure that will soften the blow for conceding seven goals. As for Spain, the mood was markedly different. Scotland's aptly named Scott McTominay, who's not best known for his goal-scoring exploits, netted twice to sink the Spaniards. Understandably, the Spanish press were scathing in the assessment of their side's performance. AS called it the shipwreck of Glasgow. Go, deploring in particular their horrible second half showing. They were quick to question the decision to make eight changes from the team that beat Norway 3-0 just days prior. Barcelona-based publication Sport then acknowledged that there were no Barca players in the starting lineup. But manager Luis de la Fuente sought to defend his stars. We have to improve a lot, but I'm delighted with the attitude of the players. The most important thing is to take a positive reading and then see what didn't work. Our plan doesn't change. We've still got six group games left, and Spain will continue their quest, which is to win the remaining games. We already knew it wasn't going to be easy. Spain had more chances than Scotland, but they scored theirs. That might be an optimistic stance to take, but it hasn't quashed the skepticism surrounding the new look Spanish outfit. This is how one journalist from El Laguero judged the situation. The worst is not the defeat, it's the image of the side. The next meetup will be essential in order to ascertain whether the manager behaves with personality just as his predecessor did. As for the players, Rodri preferred to discuss their opponents. That's their way of playing. You have to respect it, but honestly, it's pretty ugly. They spend their time trying to gain time, provoking players by rolling on the floor. For me, that's not football. In order to speed the game up, you have to advance, and it's up to the referee to do something, but he did nothing. It's a little frustrating because we wanted to win. It's difficult because of all the time wasting, but they have their weapons. We need to use ours, and we'll learn how to do that next time. The Man City star remains that his side were up for the fight, but that Scotland's antics dampened their resolve. We want to go for duels, for battles. We always fight, but this is not about fighting. It's about wasting time four, five players on the floor, but this depends on the referee, not on us. So if we asked you to name another World Cup winning nation currently in crisis, who would spring to mind? Germany, perhaps? Die Mannschaft were beaten 3-2 by Belgium last night. The Red Devils stormed out of the blocks, with Yannick Carrasco and Romelu Lukaku scoring in the 6th and 9th minute, respectively. Despite their domination, Germany reduced the deficit courtesy of Niklas Fulkrug's penalty in the 44th minute. Belgium then re-established a two-goal lead thanks to Kevin De Bruyne's finish in the 78th minute. But in the dying moments, Serge Gnabry netted to make it 3-2. So how do you think Germany will fare in the Euro 2024 on home soil? Sadio Mane was involved in a heated bust-up with Julian Nagelsmann, and their fiery exchange contributed towards the manager's departure from Bayern Munich. These are the latest reports to have emerged from German publication Bild. Their verbal altercation is said to have taken place in the dressing room after 
after Bayern Munich had secured their ticket to the quarter-finals of the Champions League with a win over PSG. Mane was in fact injured for the first leg, but worked relentlessly to make himself available for the return fixture. That wasn't enough to convince Nagelsmann, however, as the Senegalese star featured just eight minutes that night, and that sparked a furious response from the former Liverpool man. According to sources, he expressed his disappointment in front of his teammates, an outburst which left his manager feeling intimidated. Coincidentally, just days later, Mane started against Augsburg in the Bundesliga. The affair reinforced the notion that Nagelsmann had lost authority within the dressing room. Their altercation also sought to deepen the fractures within the squad, some of whom supported the manager, while others, like Sadio Mane, wanted him gone. And as we now know, many of whom got their wish, as Julian Nagelsmann was surprisingly sacked by the club's board last weekend. The German tactician is now out of work, but considering the lucrative payout he's set to receive, he can afford to take his time. He has been linked with the vacant managerial role at Tottenham Hotspur, who parted ways with Antonio Conte just days later. But according to reports in the Evening Standard, Christophe Gaultier is also of interest to Tottenham Chiefs. Daniel Levy and co hope to convince the Frenchman of joining the North London side this summer. RMC Sport expects the current PSG boss to see out the remainder of this campaign in the French capital. But in other news, Erling Haaland has found himself in hot water. No, not literally, that guy is ice cold as always. The Norwegian goal machine was caught using his phone while behind the wheel. The incident took place just hours after Manchester City's sensational 7-0 thumping of RB Leipzig in the Champions League. A game in which, let's not forget, Haaland netted five goals. Clearly, he's not quite as quick as putting his phone away. The former Dortmund man was spotted using his device in the area of New Islington, just a matter of metres away from the Etihad Stadium. A spokesperson for the AA used all his quick wit to comment on the infringement. It's a straight red with no excuses. Holding your phone while driving is dangerous. For someone so effective at scoring, this is definitely an own goal. Yeah, we reckon they're quite proud of that one. Unfortunately for Haaland, his mistake could entail repercussions. The laws have tightened for this kind of misdemeanor recently. Anyone caught using their phone could face six penalty points on their license and a £200 fine. But for those who have been driving for less than two years, they can even have their license revoked. Haaland and his agent were contacted by The Sun, but so far have refused to comment. Well, he's a top guy for not speaking to the sun, at least. In other news, Neymar has announced via his publicist that his Twitter account was hacked on Tuesday, as was his sister's. It's been pirated, he proclaimed via the network. Twitter are taking care of the issue. At this time, I have no further information. As if we needed any nay, we think we've got the picture. So if you see any plugs for McDonald's or retweets slamming Kylian Mbappe, just know that it's not coming from the man himself. The Brazilian is still recovering from an ankle operation he underwent earlier this month. Okay, that's all from us for today for news from the footballing world, but don't worry, we'll be back again tomorrow for more. In the meantime, take care and as always, football forever.